Oh, what a time and season. It is always good to be home. There's no place like home. Glory. Hallelujah. How many of y'all know God's on the move? Yeah, he's moving big time. You know, when I, a while ago when I was talking about the winds of God in the area to where there's three winds that's happening, three whirlwinds. And again, we talked about the first whirlwind that was driving back, exposing, removing, opening, cutting. That's known as the sword also. The second whirlwind that was coming, which we're still in, and there's still the first whirlwind. All of these whirlwinds are going to increase and increase to a fullness where they all meet. The second whirlwind was going to drop provision strategy, which is actually an area of what we call shield or faith. And then the third whirlwind would come and take the bride home. And in this time that we are in, in this transition, one of the things that Jesus did, he brought three of his disciples before him before he was transfigured. And I really believe that those three disciples also saw to see with the three winds. And the word tells us that the woman would be taken up with two wings and brought to a safe place for three and a half years, which is known as a rapture. And of course, the two wings are associated with the two prophets that will come, which is most likely Elijah and Moses. And that will be the completion of all three winds. So in this time, in this transition, and in this process, there is a burning, there is a quaking, there's a shaking, there's an exposing, there's removal, there's a, a reality of things that we need to take care of. We need to get our houses in order, this house first. One of the things the Lord has always said is, when will you build my house? Of course, the word says, unless the Lord builds the house, but that means your cooperation with him to build his house. Amen. And the first house that needs to be built, of course, is this temple of ours. Remember, we are now the temple of the living God. We are now the carrier of the truth. We are not only ambassadors and stewards of the mysteries of God, but we are third dimensional warriors. And one of those areas makes it different. See, a handful of third-dimensional warriors can change the world. <laughs> That's what makes it different. And in this, we've got to be, we have to make it our desire and our will to activate. What you choose, your will, is what's activating. You can choose to turn the switch on or off. Amen? So you're going to activate or deactivate something. And so we're, we're talking about the sword and the shield, which is two operations in the armor of God that is constant use. It's essential. They're both for offense and defense. And they both must work accordingly together. If you remember the soldiers and the warriors and so forth that were out there, there was a shield and a sword. And so many times people are trying to go out with a shield without a sword and a sword without a shield. And they're not activating the full armor of God, which is your choice and your will, which does the activation. There are many people are going out there without a full activation of the full armor of God. And they're not victorious. Because without a full armor of God activated, you cannot become victorious. That takes obedience. That takes discipline. It takes surrender. It takes submission. 
All of these areas. What does the word say? Submit to God, resist the devil. But why don't people resist the devil? Because they're not activating the full armor of God. The only thing they're activating is flesh. In Ephesians 6, the sword and the shield. Oh, hallelujah. Ephesians 6, 10, let's speak it. Finally, here's the conclusion. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. I mean, that is so powerful. Be strong in the Lord. What does it mean, be strong in his presence? Be strong in his presence. Be strong in the anointing. In other words, engulf it and let it engulf you. Be strong. Not if you're not strong, there's a breach in the armor. Remember, it's activated by your will, your choice. Strong in his presence. Be strong. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Be strong. Put on the whole armor, <clears throat> put on the whole armor of God. <laughs> Sheesh. <clears throat> Let me repeat that. <laughs> Put on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand against the trickery wiles of the devil. Why? He said not partial whole armor. Again, many people are not activating the full armor of God. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers of, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. So our battle is not physical, it's spiritual. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the attacks in the evil days, the temptations in the evil days. And having done all to stand... Stand therefore, having girded your waist with the truth. That's a belt. If you're not activating the truth, your pants will fall down. And you will trip over them. You'll be like one of those who are holding their pants while they're running, you know. I can't, I haven't seen one of them hop a fence yet. They want to play gangster out there. They can't even hop a fence. Hallelujah. They're too busy holding their pants up. Praise God. Having girded your waist with the truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, that's covering your chest. Now in the Old Testament, they had stones that told them yes or no. The priest had an ephod. Had the 12 tribes of Israel, and it also had two stones. The, uh, Thurim and, what was the other one? Thurim and Thurim, Thurim. Urim, something like that, I don't know. Anyways, there were two stones. And when they went into the presence of the Lord as a priest, they wanted to know a yes or no answer, and they would light up for yes or no. Why? Because this is where God is expressing himself in your heart. You will know what direction you're to go to if you're hearing. Amen? That way, if your heart is in a place of righteousness, you will hear God. Unless you're too busy looking in the mirror, then you won't hear Him. Hallelujah. And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. See, we should walk in peace all the time. If you're not in peace, you're in torment. That means something's been breached in your armor. Above all, taking the what? Um, again, above all. Above all, take the shield of faith. Above all. With which you are able to quench the voice of the stranger. 
the temptations of the wicked one. Again, why do people agree with the voice of the stranger? The shield's not activated. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Hmm. And being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Again, be strong in the presence of God and the anointing and His power. Be strong. So what does he mean by that? Grab hold. Get activated. Make the choice to get in his presence. Fight for his presence. And 2 Timothy chapter 2. See, without the anointing of being strong in the presence of God, things won't be activated. And that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to, you to believe that you have the armor of God on, but you're not activated. Does everybody get it? Because it's only the presence of God that activates everything. 2 Timothy 2, in verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. You therefore, my son, be what? Be what? Strong in the what? Grace. What's the grace mean? Plan. So he's requiring that not only we be strong in the presence of God, but that we be strong in the plan. We don't waver. We don't allow it to get derailed. Be strong in the plan that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men and women who are able to what? Teach others. In other words, they're the example. Remember, faith full. They're full of what? Faith. You therefore must endure. You must fight hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself in the affairs of this life. That he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. That is called submission to his divine order. Does everybody get it? Be strong in the power of his might and be strong in his plan. No wavering. Ephesians 4. And how are you going to maintain that? Listen, the sword and the shield has got to be constantly active. The armor is going to be constantly active, and it's acted by the presence of the Lord. But you make that choice. Amen? You get dressed with the full armor, and it must be activated. Ephesians 4.11. And it says, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. For the equipping of the saints. For what? Equipping of, for the arming of the saints. How many know God wants, he wants everyone to be a warrior. Just think how much more advanced we would be if the whole body was a warrior. For the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edification of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith, we're all connected, and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a what? Perfect man, that means complete in him. To the measure, the stature, the fullness of the anointing, where everything is activated, that we should no longer be children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men 
and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effect of working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Training. Training, training, what, you know, when we think about this training, one of the things we're being trained for is agree <laughs> with the things that God says, not with what man says. To agree with what God says, not what you feel, your emotions say. To agree with, not always what your mind says. Not becoming a man pleaser, but becoming a God pleaser. It is training to learn the difference between the voice of carnality. The voice of evil influence. Let me tell you, that voice will come in a sweet way many times. Oh, it's okay. Just like it came to Eve. It's all right. Go ahead, just do what you feel like doing. You ain't got to submit to nobody. Hello. Listen, we're in a military operation. There better be submission. Without submission, there's failure. Amen? See, but if we're not thinking that way, we're disconnected. We're thinking about ourselves, me, myself, and I. I'm going to do this because I feel like it. I have an opportunity. But there's no, listen, no accountability, no trust. God ain't going to trust you for nothing until you can be faithful with a little. You know, people want to grow and they want to do all these things and do all, but they haven't completed the first little task. I get people that come in for counsel over, over, and over. They still haven't done the first one. You think God's going to put them in a position to trust? No way. Not until they've completed things. Everything's about completing, raising to the level. Amen? Is everybody okay? So training. We're in training. The power to choose what? Choose the things that are pleasing to God. Choose the right, listen, if we made more right choices, we wouldn't have so much problem. <laughs> Training the warfare. Now, let me explain something here. The word says that we're blessed every spiritual blessing and, blessing and seated in heavenly places. So what God is trying to do, I really believe that he's trying to get us into a place where we warfare from an eternal point of view. Not from a worldly point of view. From an eternal point of view. Which brings an understanding to the end result of everything. Does everybody understand that? In other words, you are in our warfare. Let me think. Listen, in my warfare time, I can't reach everything, but he can. See, so I, my confession is, Lord, your armor's not too short. There ain't nothing you don't see or know. So I'm asking that you extend and dispatch fire, warring angels, military, law enforcement, somebody to a location. Not only on the planet, but off the planet. There are multiple places that I warfare. Why? Because I'm not warfaring from a carnal point of view, I'm warfaring from an eternal point of view. Does everybody understand? When you can warfare from an eternal point of view, you can see the end result. If you're not seeing the end result, you are not warfaring from an eternal point of view. You are warfaring from a carnal point of view. And that is not faith. Does everybody get it? And I believe this is why we're going through all of this right now. God is trying to break us. He's trying to break us out of these traditions and religions. He's trying to break us out of commonness. And bring us to another level of mastery. Where we're more like him. What does the word say? It says that he sits next to the right hand of the Father. And what does he do? Intercede for me and you. Why? Because he's warfaring from an eternal point of location. Does everybody get it? And so you and I need to do the same thing because we're supposed to be sitting right with them. 
But if we're not, listen, if we don't have that understanding, this is where the enemy operates. If, he, if you don't know it, you don't get it. If you don't understand it, you're missing it. We must warfare from an eternal point of view. So we're actually looking down, not up. We're looking across. We're looking through universes. We're looking through multiple dimensions in warfaring. Remember, this warfare is not in just one dimension. It's multiple dimensions. It's on and off planets. It's in spacecrafts. It's all over. We are warfaring. 1 John chapter 5. Hallelujah. It's almost like the Lord is bringing us through a whole new training session. First John chapter 5. Oh, yes. What is the word he, he warns us? Don't, don't, don't be entangled in the fears of this world. Don't, don't let the cares of this world choke you. Don't let the riches of this world choke you. Don't let the desires of this world kill you. 1 John chapter 5, verse 18. Let's speak it. We know that whoever is born of God are born of the Spirit. Now, let me share this with you. When you are born of the Spirit, you're automatically seated in, in heavenly places. Amen? You're already seated there. In other words, there's a place and position for you. Now, you got to get there. Amen? It's a place and position for you. We know that whoever is born of the Spirit or born of God does not sin. He doesn't cooperate with darkness, but he has been born of God, keeps himself, keeping yourself is keeping yourself in position. Why? Because if you stay in position, look what happens. And the wicked one does not touch him. <laughs> we know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. But you're above it if you're there, if you're in that position. And we know that the Son of God has come and given us an understanding. And I believe that we're getting another understanding about warring from the eternal point of, point of view and stop warring according to the carnal point of view or physical or earthly. And we know that the Son of God has come and given us an understanding that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from the idol because they'll kick you right out of your seat. Born of the Spirit puts individuals in an eternal position to overcome all attacks of evil influence. Ephesians 4.17 Again, we are being trained now to war for warfare from an eternal point of view. This is a whole new training session by the Spirit of God. Glory. Ephesians 4, 17. This I say, therefore, and testify in our Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of those who aren't seated, positioned, Gentiles. Walk in fertility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. Who be in past feeling, feeling. That old feeling. Have given themselves over to lewdness because they feel like it. 
to work all uncleanness with greediness. He said, but you've not learned the anointing then. You haven't learned Christ. In other words, you might know the word, know about it, but not putting it into practice, not activating the full armor of God, not using the sword and the shield, not fighting, fighting. Just going along. Listen, I mean, you can attend in every service and everything and still not advance. Amen? Unless you use what you've learned. That's why it's called training. But you've not so learned Christ, the anointing, if indeed you heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you do what? Put what? He didn't say put on. He said put off. Put off, that means deny thyself. Deny your flesh, your desires. Deny your wants. Examine yourself. He calls it the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Why? So you can get reconnected in the spiritual places. That you put on the new man. That seated in heavenly places, blessed every spiritual blessing, third dimensional warrior, and warring according to the eternal point of view, not temporary or physical or carnal, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, putting away lying leech, each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and don't sin. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Don't give place to the devil. Thank you. The new man is armed with the spirit. The old man is armed with emotional desire. Lust. Amen. Many not activating the shield and the sword, which is the choice, your will. Your will activates it. Which work together to advance the battleground and change the atmosphere. See, now you're you're battling for the reaching the point to cross over. Amen. You're reaching the point to cross over. And that's where praise and worship comes in, which assists us to cross over. And that's where that true love affair is with the Lord. It's not a mo it's not an imagination. It's a reality. It's not a hope. It is. Amen. <laughs> and you know, I'm going to tell you, not many people reach it because they're not willing to pay the price. They're too caught up in themselves. You can't cross over in the flesh. You can't cross over. And carnality, you can't cross over except for the Spirit. And you can't cross over without a fight. But many people reach the edge to cross over and never do. Hallelujah. Psalm 51. Psalm 51. In the area where he talked about the peace, there's a peace where there's no more thinking. Where the mind isn't going. <laughs> it's called the nothing box. available for all mankind <laughs> only in the spirit <laughs> glory what do you mean there's nothing in there when you get nothing you crossed over I don't mean acting like an idiot in front of the TV going, uh. in the 
in this place of crossing over, the only thing that is there is the presence of the Lord. You just fall into his arm and there's such a love. There's such a fulfillment where nothing else can compare. And when you leave that place of fulfillment, you don't want nothing else. In fact, the world is really nasty. It's disgusting and filthy. Because in that place, it's pure and holy and wonderful. And like I said, not many have reached it. And it isn't because the devil's interfering. It's because they're interfering. Psalm 51, verse 1. Have mercy on me. Let's speak it. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my what? Transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, only you, have I what? Sin and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge me. That's what he's talking about. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and sin. My mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth where? In the inward parts. And in the hidden part, you will make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssops and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear the joy of gladness that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. Create in me a what? Clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast, immovable, strong in your presence and strong in your plan, spirit within me. And don't cast me away from your presence. Why? He knew the, without his presence didn't matter. And do not take your Holy Spirit from me. How many of you know you grieve the Holy Spirit and he lifts? Whew. Restore me, restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will what? Teach. Transgressors your ways and sinners will be converted to you. You know, I was at a, I preached in a location, and uh, I, I couldn't believe that not many people showed up with their Bibles. I guess they're accustomed to have the scriptures on the walls or something, I don't know. But I'm like, let me tell you, if I went to a place without a, a Bible and a notebook, the Lord would kick my butt. He would convict me. He would call that pure pride. Pure pride. What, you think you're above everything? What? I've called you to teach. How are you going to teach if you don't have notes to teach? I'm telling you, he would convict me. See, people aren't getting convicted because they're full of pride. And now their heart is hardened. They do the emotions. They do the rituals. Amen? Not really routines. And people weren't, I, I, was, I was amazed. Whole congregation. Like, and now some people had a couple, couple, there was a few people, I guess. But not many. I, I'm, to me, I'm baffled by it. How do you go to a service without a, a Bible and a notebook? How are you going to learn? How are you going to teach? Just, I don't know, I was just brought up that way ever since I was saved. Before that, I could give a hoot. But anyway, praise God. Clean heart. A, what is a clean heart? A pure, it's one that is submissive. Think about that. It's a heart that's always looking to submit to God. It's unwavering spirit unwavering spirit. Give me a, a clean heart and a steadfast spirit. It's unwavering. Amen? In the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Let me share with you, it's the only way to say goodbye to the world. 
See, some people are still not saying goodbye to the world. We must reach a point of no return. No return. Always living on the edge of crossover. And again, it takes an offensive and defensive fight, which is your sword and shield, activating the full armor of God to fight to get to that place. Amen? In James chapter 4. James chapter 4. <laughs> Is everybody okay? War for from an eternal point of view. You need to activate the sword and the shield all the time. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Verse 1. Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and don't have. You murder and covenant cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you do not have because you don't ask. You know, ask takes humbleness too. But it's not an asking in pride. It's an asking in humility. Adulterers and adulteresses, adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever... Therefore, wants to be a friend of the world, makes himself an enemy of God. Well, that's plain and simple. Or do you think that the Scripture says in vain, the Spirit who dwells in us yearns jealousy, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the prideful, the self-willed, the unsurrendered will. He resists them. He says, I won't give you any more. Humble yourself. And fulfill what I've told you to do the first time. But he gives grace. He gives the plan of escape to the humble. Therefore, submit to God and resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Then why doesn't the devil flee from many people? Because they're not truly submitting to God and his divine rule of order. Draw near to God, and he'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, double-minded. Humble yourselves, in the, uh, 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 humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will do what? Is anybody there? He'll lift you up. Praise God. Submit to his authority to resist evil influence. With full activation of the armor, people become double-minded, not able to see the end result. Only the present desires. Psalm 34. Where we have to always look at ourselves. Where do we stand? That's where we examine ourselves. Lord, is there anything I've done that's offended you? Lord, where have I gone out of order? You know, because we... So many times people do not look at this as a military operation. They look at a religious operation. Well, see, I look at it as a military operation because I serve the Lord of hosts. So there are some people that I don't want to warfare with me because I can't trust them. I want people to watch my back as I'm watching theirs. Think about that. Is there, there's places that you won't go with certain people. They may be nice people, good people, but they ain't third-dimensional warriors. They're still caught up in themselves. Psalm 34, verse 1. In fact, in the military, when another soldier is... Not in cooperation. That other soldiers turn around and shoot him. Kill him. Because he knows that I can't trust you now. 
when you're out in that front that line in warfare uh, there'll be soldiers that will kill another soldier because they're dangerous they'd rather lose one than a whole platoon Verse 1, I will bless the Lord when? Oh, thank God you didn't say when you feel like it. I will bless the Lord at all times. Why? Praise will be continuing in your mouth. His praise will continue to be in my mouth. Oh, there it is, confirmation. <laughs> my soul shall make its boast where? In the Lord, not myself. <laughs> Please don't tell someone how good they are. Dear God, tell them to love by Christ. Oh, you're so good. Oh, shut up. You're, you're, you're promoting pride in that person. Oh, you're so good. You do this. You do that. Stop it. That's not wrong going, good job, that's it. <laughs> oh, but this was this. this forget it. Now you're puffing their flesh up. Amen? <laughs> Look at, you're going to hear a good job the day you get in the presence of God and he says, enter in my good and faithful. That's all you need. I'm telling you, when, when I first got saved and the Lord was sending me to places and I was in my van and this got done preaching and ministering at a place and I'm driving in my van and this I can sense this big shadow behind me and the first words out of his mouth was real gentle nice job good job you did wonderful you I'm like shut up I finally bound that thing and cast it out of my truck then I had peace one thing, I, when I started hearing that voice, it's like, you're out of here, homie. You see, the devil wants to bring you to you. Does everybody get it? Some people need to be, what is it, affirmed all the time? Well, what about me? What about me? What about me? You're, you're an idiot. Get your face off your face. Again, that's flesh book, too. Hi. I've never seen so many pictures in my life. Go to flesh book. You can talk about promotion of self and a firm of self. Dear God. Look at the picture of me. Look at a picture of me. This, this, and this. With this person, that, that person, this person. Who cares? Hallelujah. Anyways. Just stop it. I hate emails with people's pictures on them. Don't email with me with your picture on it. I'll burn it. I don't need to see your mold. Your name is sufficient. Hallelujah. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, would you please? And not a person. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and deliver me from all of my emotions or fears. That's an emotion. They looked at him and were radiant. And their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him from Facebook, from all his troubles. The angel of the Lord camps around all those who have reverence, honor, and respect for him and not for self. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes. Who fear him. And he de they deliver him. Verse 8. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blesses the man who trusts in him. 
Oh, fear the Lord, you saints. There is no want or lack to those who fear him. The young lions lack and, and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Come, you children, listen to me, and I will teach you the reverence of fear of God, who is a man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good. Keep your tongue and a bow tie from speaking evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good and seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The fear of the Lord activates your will. Does everybody get it? And it will activate your will to activate your armor. No longer fighting for your life, but for his in the presence, in his presence in this world, able to see the end result. Matthew 10. Sword and shield. Verse 16. Everybody okay? Are you learning something? Let's speak it. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of what? Wolves. Therefore be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils and scourge you in their synagogues. You will be, be brought before governors and kings of, for my sake as testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, don't, don't worry about how what, or what you're going to speak. For it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your Father who speaks in you and through you. Now brother will deliver a brother to death, and father his child and the children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in this city, flee to another for surely I say to you, you will not have gone through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher and a servant like his master. If they had called the master of the house of Beelzebub, how much more would they call those of his household? Therefore do not fear them, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known. <laughs> Whatever I tell you in dark, speak in the light. And what you hear in the ear, preach on the housetops. Do not fear those who will kill the body but cannot kill the soul. But rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? And not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Gosh, I need that. Lord, you know the number of my hair. <laughs> you know it's depleting. Return my hair, please. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Verse 31. <laughs> Do not, hey, there's a lot of people that are agreeing right now with me. <laughs> 
when people hear this message, let me tell you, there's got to be a lot of, yeah, Lord, return my ear too. <laughs> But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So do not fear, therefore you are of more value than many sparrows. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Do not think I came to what? I did not come to bring what? Peace. On earth, I did not come to bring peace, but what? A sword. Hello. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against his mo her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross or his sword and shield, hello, and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. <laughs> Second Peter 1. Hallelujah. I'm expecting to wake up with a big fro. <laughs> so you may see me different tomorrow. <laughs> Glory to God. First Peter chapter 1. <laughs> Verse something no that's second peter chapter one <laughs> don't go there hon second peter chapter one verse two <laughs> is everybody there let's read it grace and peace be what multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things. Now think about it. His divine power has given us all things. That means without his presence and his power, you don't have all things. It's called the anointing. That pertain to what? Life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue by which have been given to us exceedingly and great precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So he's saying without the divine nature, you're not going to escape. Does everybody understand that? Anybody understand that? Okay. Divine powers and anointing given to us all things as partakers of the divine nature, resulting in desire for divine order. That means in full submission to his authority, maintaining an activated lifestyle in the full armor of God. You want me to repeat that? Okay. The divine power is the anointing given to us, which is available all things as partakers of the divine nature. Resulting in a desire for divine order. See, when the divine nature is there, you desire divine order. That is in full submission to his authority. And you're doing this because you're maintaining an activated lifestyle in the full armor of God. You didn't get that one? We can go on. YouTube or whatever it is. Where do we send it? No, we don't put it on. Do we? You can go to Fleshbook. <laughs> so 
Praise God. Hey, we're sending a message on Fleshbook. You know what I'm saying? 2 Timothy 2. Right? Oh, why didn't you say so? Eternal Library. It's a wonderful place to go to. You can hang out there all day long. Powerful teachings, videos. Dimensional port. You get enough teachings, you become a dimensional port yourself. Glory. Verse 20. Is everybody there? Or something like that. 21. Let's go to 21. We're in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Is everybody there? Okay. You're the only one not there. Glory to God. Verse 21. Is everybody there? Mrs. Ainello, are you there? Okay. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, if, if you choose <laughs> to activate your agreements with his cleansing, does everybody understand that? You're activating, you're agreeing with, yes, this cleansing and purging and freeing from the past. That's from all entanglements of emotional desires, fears, and lusts. You will activate your seat of position in heavenly places. I'm going to say that again because it's vital. Because if you're not willing to cleanse and cut yourself loose from the entanglements and affairs of your past life, you can't activate that seat and position. Because that seat and position has nothing to do with carnality or your old life. You are a new creation in Christ. Does everybody get it? It will not be activated. You will not be able to warfare from an eternal point of view, only from a physical. Hallelujah. Let's go a little further. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel of what? For honor. Sanctified. And useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Fully also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a what? Pure heart, associations, bring impartition, and avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And the servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle, all able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition of God, perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do their will. Again, if you choose, amen, to activate all your agreements to cleanse your past from all entanglements of emotional desires and fears and lusts, you will activate your seat of position in heavenly places. And you will battle from the eternal point of view, not temporary, using a, a sword and a shield with a full armor to advance the kingdom of God. That's where we're at right now. We, mu we must begin to understand this and see this. It's vital. The battle's getting harder. It's getting stronger. Listen, everybody's going through something. Praise God. People need healing emotionally, physically, mentally. God is squeezing. I'm telling you, I saw seeds popping out of people. Like an owl. <laughs> The seeds got to go. Those are corruptible seeds. So there's crushing for new wine, new power, and a new fresh fire. That's where we're headed. This is what's happening. We got to what, September 28th for our 90 days, something like that? Oh, happy days. But praise God, we're coming out like a flame of fire. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Father, for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that you seal and protect what has been given to us tonight. Let it penetrate every part of our being and prepare us so that we warfare from the eternal point of view instead of a temporary and physical point of view, getting ourselves out of the way, fighting for your life and not for ours, and bringing all glory, honor, and praise to you. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.